Welcome to Monday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us for another week. And this is week number 10. We moved into double digits now on this particular series. Week number 10 of our series, The New and Living Way. All part of the Navigating the New Course we're on for this year. Now I want to take today and just kind of go back real briefly and look at some scriptures we've already looked at in detail and studied over in previous lessons. And if you're just now joining us, I would encourage you at some point in time to go back and uh, catch up with us. It won't take that long. People are used to binge watching, so you can catch up pretty quick uh, with where we are now. So I'm not going to go into a great detail on these, but we do want to kind of review these and bring us up to speed on some things we're going to be getting into this week. And again, we're just laying uh, one layer of foundation on top of another. So it's imperative that sometimes we go back and reinforce some things that we've already said. And, and they just it just makes it that much firmer, that much stronger in our heart. Because we're actually dealing with heart issues, belief systems, mindsets. And we're having to renovate and change those. Renewing our mind is more than just adding scripture verses, memorization. Those are all fine. But when we're talking about renewing our minds and renovating our belief system, we're going to have to go in there and actually change some things. And that's where a lot of times people begin to get a little bit slow and reluctant is because they don't like the change a whole lot that goes on on the inside. But this is good for all of us. We need to uproot that old sin consciousness, that consciousness of sin, condemnation, guilt, and shame that's really weakening our faith creating unbelief and doubt in our life, many times creating other behavioral issues and even addictions, because all these things will, that we're talking about, these truths and realities of the new covenant, deal with these on the root issue, on the root uh, cause, the root level, I should say. But let's go back over to Hebrews chapter 9 today to begin with. Again, we're just going to pop through a few verses here in Hebrews 9 and 10 as we set up for this week. But Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 14, and again, we've already looked at this before, but Hebrews 9, 14, it says, how much more, now again, this is a comparison. He's saying, how much more shall the blood of Christ, he's, he's comparing the sacrifice of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and what it did for us in the new covenant with all the old covenant sacrifices and the, the blood of animals, which was just inferior in every regards, far inferior and uh, insufficient. It only covered over man's sins for a period of time, but it never actually got into the heart and never was able to uproot that sin consciousness. It never was able to change us on the heart level. And so again, he says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So notice, this is already a reality in heaven. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross, when he was buried, rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven, and then presented his blood, applied his blood on the heavenly holy of holies, that that did something. It, it actually uh, it erased all the record books. Of, he uh, of heaven, of our sin and wrongdoing and all those other things. But then there's also uh, an earth issue, we can say, that these truths and realities need to be applied by faith. And they, they need to be applied on the heart levels. Notice right here, he said, how much more shall the blood of Christ? Now, who is Christ? We've already looked at this. He is the son of the living God, the agent of creation. He is the eternal one. I mean, we're talking about the, the most valuable sacrifice that could have been offered in all of the universe. I can't say the creation because he really wasn't created. <laughs> he was the agent of creation. I'm telling you, he is the most valuable, most worthy thing. And this is who God offered up and gave us to be a sacrifice for our sin. The blood of Christ is the blood of the Son of the living God himself. This is representative of his life in everything that it pertains to. So it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? 
Jesus was without spot, without blemish. There was nothing wrong with him, nothing wrong with this sacrifice whatsoever. He said, how much more shall it cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? I want you to see that, that it gets then to the very heart of our being. It gets down into the conscience and begins to cleanse your conscience of all that guilt and shame and condemnation that was there because of sin and the fall of man. But notice that these truths and realities of what Jesus did in his finished work as it, when you apply it to your conscience, it begins to cleanse your conscience. In other words, it uproots, eradicates, and eliminates that old sin consciousness that keeps you withdrawing from God rather than drawing near to God. It keeps you away from God, approaching God, living in His presence, walking and living with Him, walking by faith. It keeps you from doing all that because sin consciousness is just going to, it, it's going to stand in the way of all these things happening in our life. Now, going down here, we're uh, here in Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 14. Go on to Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews the 10th chapter. And again, we're just kind of briefly looking at these, uh, just kind of review these real, and reinforce these realities in our life. But here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2, it says, for then, uh, for then would they have ceased to be offered. He's talking again about the old covenant sacrifices the animal sacrifices. They had to offer those up again and again, continuously. It was a continual thing in progress. Even, on, uh, even the, uh, the, the lamb that was slain and presented on the Day of Atonement, that was done annually, year by year, for the sins of the whole nation to cover them over for another year. But again, that, that ran out. They had to do it again the following year on the Day of Atonement. So he says, if, if uh, he said, for them would they have ceased to be offered for the wor worshipers once purified. For the wor worshipers once purified. In other words, those Old Testament sacrifices did not purify us from sin. It did not take it away. It just covered it over for a period of time. It did not purify us. He said, for the wor worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sin. Notice that once we are purified, we should have no more consciousness of sin. Well, uh, in, in contrast to the Old Covenant sacrifices and the blood that was, uh, that was applied because of the Old Covenant sacrifices, did that actually purify us? No, if they had of, they would have ceased to be offered. They wouldn't have had to be offered anymore. But did the blood of Jesus and did the sacrifice of Jesus purify us from all sin? The answer is unequivocally yes. This is the whole argument here, and this is what makes the new covenant so much better, and the promises so much better, and giving us a better hope is because Jesus' sacrifice is not only just better, that's almost an understatement, it was perfect, it was superior in every regards, that Jesus in his once and once for all sacrifice was able to eliminate and purify us from all sin for all time for that one sacrifice, that single sacrifice that he offered up. And notice once that's done, and it has been done, the end of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26, 27 says that Jesus once and once for all abolished and put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So l listen, we should have no more consciousness of sin. In other words, when we begin to know this right here and mix our faith with it and live like this is true and accept this is the reality and the truth in our life, in our, in our heart, on the heart level, then that gets rid of that consciousness of sin once and once for all. Now, let's look on down here to Hebrews chapter 14. Hebrews the 14th chapter. And it says here, For by one offering, by one offering, Jesus has perfected forever. I want you to see this right here. Now, a lot of people, they reject this right here. They're thinking it must be for the sweet by and by because we haven't been perfected forever. They look at themselves in the mirror. They see the blemishes. They see the zits. They see the moles. They see the imperfections. And they know their outward behavior and actions are imperfect. And so they're judging their right standing with God based on their outward appearance or behavior. That is not the way the new covenant works. 
Notice that we're going to get into this in the next couple of series, and we're talking about the new birth and the new creation and, and our new identity in Christ, that God did a work on the inside of us in our spirit. That what He did, He did in the real us, in our spirit. Now that doesn't mean that our behavior and our actions aren't important because your behavior and actions do carry the weight of consequences with them. Bad decisions, bad behavior uh, is going to produce bad consequences in your life. You want good consequences in your life, so those do matter, but they do not matter as far as being righteous with God. Your actions, your deeds, what you do, your works outwardly do not produce righteousness with God. What produce righteousness with God? the perfect sacrifice of Jesus, His shed blood, and you receiving that by faith. You have to appropriate and receive by faith what God has freely given us by grace. Now, again, he says, for by one offering, He has perfected forever. Not you. He has done this. He has perfected inwardly from sin, cleansed you of sin, forgiven you of sin, canceled the penalty, uh, once and once for all, he has perfected how long? Forever. Listen, not into your next sin, but perfected forever. What Jesus did in his sacrifice and his finished work, once and once for all, past, present, and future tense, has eliminated, has uh, provided for us forgiveness and cleansing of all sin. Now again, you have to appropriate that by faith. You have to receive that reality. This is not something that we achieve or work for. It's something that you receive and rest in. And it's very important that we get that right right there because if you don't, if you think your outward actions are either obtaining or maintaining right standing with God, acceptance with God, you're never going to be at rest. You're never going to take your heavenly seat at His right hand. And you're going to be up and down. You're going to be an up and down Christian. But God has given us some forever and always realities and truths that will stand the test of time and the test of life. Now he says he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Now notice he has perfected forever. How long? How long is forever? That's forever. Now a lot of people have a, a hard time with that. They say, well, you know, Jesus didn't deal with our future tense sins. Well, if, if he didn't, then anybody that was born again after he was resurrected, after his death, burial, resurrection, is in trouble. <laughs> okay? No, he is forever taking care of it. Okay? Past, present, and future tense sins. Now, uh, we're in here in Hebrews chapter 10, going down to verse number 17. He says, then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, listen, this is a reality right here. Their sins, our sins and our lawless deeds, God says, under this new covenant, it's a sworn oath under the new covenant, He said, I will no longer remember those sins and wrongdoing, those, long, those <laughs> deeds. So, in other words, your, your uh, record book of heaven has been wiped clean by the finished work and the shed blood of Jesus. Now, did God, you know, does it say He can't remember it? Does He have a lapse of memory? No, He says, I will not remember it. In other words, he has chosen to remember his son, what his son did in his perfect sacrifice for us on the cross, and what he did when he returned to heaven and presented his blood right before his throne, right before the presence of God on the mercy seat. Very important. Notice that God's not remembering it, so we don't need to be remembering it either. And in verse 18, he says, Now where there is remission, and again, we pointed out from the Amplified, it says Amp absolute remission. Absolute remission means forgiveness of sin, cancellation of the penalty, and the riddance of all guilt before God. Now where there is absolute remission of these sins, lawless deeds, wrongdoings, there is no longer an offering for sin. Why? Because there's no need for another one. Jesus is the once and once for all sacrifice and offering for sin. <laughs> Verse number 19 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness or confidence to enter into the presence of God, notice, how? By the blood of Jesus. Not by your works. Not by what you've done. See, if you're waiting on that, you will never have this kind of boldness and confidence in coming before the presence of God. Notice it's a throne of grace. He said in Hebrews 4.16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. 
Now I can tell you, you're not going to come boldly if you think it's a, still a judgment seat for you. That there's not some sacrifice and blood on that mercy seat that has provided a perfect acceptance and right standing with God. And notice right here, he says, let us come with boldness and confidence to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. It's our faith in the blood of Jesus that gives us his confidence and boldness in coming into the presence of God. Then verse 22, let us draw near, not withdraw, but draw near with a true heart, true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil or a guilty conscience, a sin consciousness, and our bodies washed with pure water. Notice again, when you apply by faith the reality of, of the blood of Jesus to your own heart, sprinkling it on your own heart, applying it to your own heart, it eliminates, uproots, eradicates that sin consciousness so that we can have, draw near to God with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Powerful things. And good way to start this week. Join us again tomorrow as we pick up from here. If you'd like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you tomorrow.